dear students i am dr k m kadarishan director center for graph theory ayanadar janaki ml college sivakasi conjugacy relation is an important equivalence relation in group theory and the equivalence classes are called conjugate classes and a finite group measures the size of the equivalence classes under this relation and then equates the number of elements in the group to the sum of the orders of these equivalence classes you will get the beautiful equivalence class of the group in the case of a commutative group it is very very simple to find the conjugate classes and one can determine the number of conjugate classes easily but in the case of a non abelian group it is very difficult to determine the number of conjugate classes in this lecture let us determine the number of conjugate classes in the non abelian group sm the symmetric group on n symbols first let us define the conjugacy relation suppose g is a group an element b is said to be a conjugate of an element a in g if there exists an element c belongs to g such that b is equal to c inverse a c so if the relation connecting a and b is b is equal to c inverse a c for some c then we say that b is a conjugate of a and we use the notation a delta b if b is a conjugate of a and this relation is called the conjugacy relation and one can show that this conjugacy is an equivalence relation on g since this relation is an equivalence relation the group g is divided into equivalence classes and the equivalence class of a is denoted by c of a so c of a is the set of all x in g which are related to a if x is related to a then by the definition of the conjugacy relation x is of the form y inverse a y so to find c of a it is enough to collect elements of the form y inverse a y or y belongs to g the c of a will be called the conjugate class of a in g if g is a finite group then the number of distinct elements in c of a will be denoted by c sub x a to write the class equation in simple form we introduce one more definition namely normalizer of an element if a is an element in g then the normalizer of a in g is the set n of a it is defined by set of all x in g such that x a is equal to a x that means n of a is the set of all those elements in g which commute with a trivially this n of a is a subgroup of g and using this normalizer one can find a formula for c a the formula for the number of elements in the equivalence class c a is c sub x a is order of g by order of n of a but order of g by order of n of a is the index of the normalizer of n of a in g so in other words the number of elements conjugate a in g is the index of the normalizer of a in g if a is any z then a collection of pairwise designed non empty subsets of a whose union is a is called a partition of a 
and this delta is and since this delta is an equivalence relation the equivalence classes form a partition of the set a and these equivalence classes are useful in deriving the class equation of a group to count the number of elements in g it is enough to count the number of elements in each conjugate class then if you add the number of elements in each conjugate class you will get order of g is equal to sigma over a order of g by order of n of a but this sum runs over one element a in each conjugate class for example consider this group we have a group s is an element in this equivalence class and c of s is the conjugate class determined by s and the number of elements in the conjugate class is denoted by cs in this way this group g is divided into equivalence classes so to count the number of elements in the group g it is enough to find the number of elements in each equivalence class and if we find the sum of these numbers we will get the class equation in our example order of g is equal to number of elements in the first equivalence class is cs number of elements in the second equivalence class is ca and so on so order of g is equal to cs plus ca plus cz plus cx plus cl is the class equation of the group g when the group is an abelian group it is very very easy to determine the conjugate class suppose g is an abelian group suppose b is a conjugate of a then by definition of the conjugacy relation b is equal to c inverse a c for some c but g is commutative so the c inverse a c is nothing but c inverse c a which is equal to a so if b is a conjugate of a then b is equal to a that means a is the only element in the equivalence class determined by a therefore c of a is equal to symbol that a for every a in g so the number of elements in this equivalence class c a equal to 1 for every a in g that means the whole group is divided into single dense sets so the class equation of g becomes order of g is equal to 1 plus 1 plus 1 order of g times so in this case that is when the group is an abelian group the class equation is very very simple so let us determine the number of conjugate classes in the case of a non abelian group our best friend for non abelian group is sn so first we discuss some results in sn every permutation can be uniquely expressed as a product of disjoint cycles for example consider this permutation here 1 goes to 3 and 3 goes to 4 4 goes to 5 and 5 goes to 1 so we get a cycle and we start from some other symbol which is not in the first cycle 2 goes to 8 8 goes to 9 9 goes to 7 and 7 goes to 2 so you will get another cycle we start from some other symbol which is not in the previous cycles let us start from 6 6 goes to 6 so your permutation is a product of three disjoint cycles and we can rearrange it in such a way that the length of the cycles are in the increasing order this is possible because designed as a cycle complete so your permutation is a product of cycles of length 1 and then a cycle of length 4 and then another cycle of length 4 so here one is less than the length of the first cycle is less than or equal to length of the second cycle less than or equal to the length of the third cycle and the sum of these lengths is equal to 9 now if theta and sigma are two permutations then by finding theta inverse 
and then multiplying theta inverse sigma and then multiplying theta inverse sigma by theta you can find theta inverse sigma theta but it is very very tedious so without finding theta inverse sigma theta is it possible to find theta inverse sigma theta in a simple way there is a simple way suppose your sigma sends i in, i goes i into j and theta is a permutation which sends i into s and j into t that means if sigma takes i into j your theta sends this i into s and your theta sends this j to t now let us determine theta inverse sigma theta what is theta inverse sigma theta of s that is s of theta inverse sigma theta first apply theta inverse your theta takes i into s so your theta inverse takes s into s into i so s theta inverse is i so the left hand side is equal to i into sigma theta now apply sigma i sigma your sigma sends i into j so i sigma is j j into theta and j theta the image of j under theta is t so the value is t so this theta inverse sigma theta takes s into t what is the meaning of this statement if sigma sends i into j then your theta inverse sigma theta sends the image of i under theta image of i under theta is s so instead of i we take s and then the image of j under theta is t so your theta inverse sigma theta sends s to t the, so what is the rule if the sigma sends i to j then replace this i by i theta and replace this j by j theta so to compute theta inverse sigma theta replace every symbol in sigma by its image under theta for example consider this permutation theta is equal to 1 2 3 4 7 and sigma is equal to 5 6 7 3 4 you can determine theta inverse sigma theta by finding theta inverse and then multiplying theta inverse by sigma and then multiplying it by theta you can find theta inverse sigma theta but by our simple rule this theta inverse sigma theta is just to replace every symbol in sigma by its image under theta so instead of pi we write to pi theta instead of six we write six theta instead of seven we write seven theta instead of 3 we write 3 theta instead of 4 we write 4 theta instead of 2 we write 2 theta so the answer is 5 6 4 2 7 3 so it is a simple rule to compute theta inverse sigma theta let us define the partition of an integer n given the integer n we say the set of positive integers n1 n2 nr where n1 is less than or equal to n2, less than or equal to n3, etc., less than or equal to nr, constitutes a partition of n, if n equal to n1 plus n2 plus nr. And the number of partitions of an integer n is denoted by p of n. For example, p of 1 is equal to 1, since 1 is equal to 1 is the only partition for 1. And in the case of 2, there are two partitions. You can write the 2 as 2 or you can write 2 as 1 plus 1. So there are two partitions for 2. So P of 2 is equal to 2. And for 3, there are three different partitions. You can write 3 is equal to 3, or 3 is equal to 1 plus 2, or 3 is equal to 1 plus 1 plus 1. So there are three partitions for 3, so P of 3 is equal to 3. In this way, P of 4 is equal to 5, and P of 5 is equal to 7, P of 6 is equal to 11. Now let us find the number of conjugate classes in Sn. Actually, the number of conjugate classes in Sn is P of n, the number of partitions of n. First, let us explain the meaning of this statement in the case of S3. In S3, there are six permutations. And this S3 is divided into three equivalence classes. The first equivalence class is the equivalence class determined by E. 
the second equivalence class is the equivalence class determined by 1 2 the third one is the equivalence class determined by 1 2 3 now corresponding to this permutation e we can associate a partition this e can be written in the form cycle of length 1 into another cycle of length 2 and another cycle of length 3 so this e identity permutation can be written as a product of designed cycles in this way so corresponding to this expression we get the partition 1 plus 1 plus 1 so we can associate the partition 1 plus 1 plus 1 to this identity permutation. Now consider the permutation 1, 2. Actually, the permutation 1, 2 is the cycle of length 3 into the cycle 1, 2. So the partition is the first one is a cycle of length 1, the second one is a cycle of length 2. So you will get a partition 1 plus 2. So corresponding to this permutation, we get the partition 1 plus 2. And for these two permutations also, we get the same partition 1 plus 2. So totally, for the whole equivalence class, we can associate the partition 1 plus 2. In a similar way, uh, we associate 3, 3 is a partition of 3, to this permutation 1, 2, 3. And for 1, 3, 2 also, the corresponding partition is 3. So for the whole equivalence class, determined by 1, 2, 3, we associate a partition 3. So in this way, for each equivalence class, we associate a unique partition. And for every partition of 3, here we say that there exists an equivalence class. So the number of equivalence classes of S3 is the same as the number of partitions of 3. Therefore, the number of conjugate classes in S3 is P of and using this example, let us prove the result for more general setting. Let sigma belongs to S. Then we can write sigma as a product of pairwise designed cycles. A1 into AR1, B1 into BR2, C1 into CRK in a unique way. Where we can arrange, rearrange the cycles in such a way that R1 is less than or equal to R2, less than or equal to Rk. And R1 plus R2 plus Rk is equal to N. In this way, to every sigma, we associate a unique partition R1, R2, Rk. This expression is unique. And so given any permutation, we can get a unique partition of N. Now, to each conjugate class in Sn, there corresponds a unique partition of N. That means, if two permutations are in the same equivalence class, they will determine the same partition. For example, assume that gamma and sigma are conjugate. Then by the definition of conjugacy relation, your gamma is equal to beta inverse sigma beta. Now we know that the sigma is a product of cycles. And by our rule, we can write this gamma. What is gamma? If sigma is equal to A1 into AR1, B1 into BR2, and so on, then gamma is equal to just replace every symbol in sigma by its image under beta. So in this way, gamma is equal to A1 beta, A2 beta, and so on. That means your gamma also determine the partition R1 plus R2 plus Rk which is equal to M. So if sigma and gamma are conjugate, they will determine the same partition of M. Thus to each conjugate class in Sn, that corresponds to a unique partition of M. Conversely, consider a partition N1 plus N2 plus N or equal to M, a partition of M. Corresponding to this partition, let us associate a permutation sigma. It is very easy to write the permutation sigma. Sigma is a product of cycles. First to write some cycle of length n1. Corresponding to this n1, write 
sum cycle of length n1 and corresponding to n2 write some other cycle not using the symbols used in the specific cycle we have write another cycle of length n2 and then finally we have write corresponding to this nr we have write a cycle corresponding to this nr by using the symbols which are not used in the previous cycles for example I consider the partition 1 plus 2 plus 2 of 5. Corresponding to this partition, the required permutation is corresponding to 1, write a 1 cycle, for example 1. And corresponding to this 2, write a 2 cycle, namely 2, 3. Then corresponding to this 2, write another 2 cycle using the symbols which are not used in the previous cycles. So corresponding to this 2, we have write 2, 4, 5. So corresponding to this partition 1 plus 2 plus 2, we have the permutation 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Of course, it is not unique. So what will happen if we are able to write another permutation corresponding to this 1 plus 2 plus 2? Suppose there exists another permutation tau equal to alpha, alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha n1, beta 1, beta 2, beta n2, some chi 1, chi 2, chi n r or the same partition n1 plus n2 plus nr equal to n. Then this sigma, this tau and sigma are related by the relation tau is equal to theta inverse sigma theta. Here what is theta? You have to write a suitable permutation theta. And this theta can be write in an easy way. What is theta? Theta is the permutation where the first row is the symbols in sigma and the second rows are elements of the permutation tau. Let us verify whether tau is equal to this theta inverse sigma theta. Let us verify whether these two permutations tau and theta inverse sigma theta coincides on every symbol. For example, take alpha 1. Alpha 1 theta inverse sigma theta is equal to alpha 1 theta inverse is a1 and a1 sigma is a2. a2 theta is alpha 2 and this alpha 2 is alpha 1 tau. So for alpha 1, both theta inverse sigma theta and tau coincides. In a similar way, for alpha n1, alpha n1 theta inverse sigma theta is equal to alpha n1 theta inverse is an1, a11 sigma is a1, and a1 theta is alpha1, and this alpha1 is alpha n1 tau. So, theta inverse sigma theta and tau coincide on alpha n1 also. In this way, theta inverse sigma theta and tau coincide on each symbol. So given any permit, so we can say that tau is equal to theta inverse sigma theta. In this manner, given any partition, we can associate a unique conjugate class. So to every conjugate class, we have associated a unique partition. And for every partition, we have associated a unique conjugate class. So to find the number of conjugate classes, it is enough to find the number of partitions. Hence, there is a one-one correspondence between the conjugate classes in Sn and the partitions of N. Therefore, the number of conjugate classes in Sn is nothing but the number of partitions of N. And the number of partitions of N is P of N. So the conclusion is the number of conjugate classes of Sn is Thank you.